I'm about to show you guys eight FL Studio shortcuts that kind of feel like cheating. I'm not giving you necessarily typical ones you hear all the time, and, and nor am I trying to find something that's special and unique just for the sake of having a unique shortcut. I'm just gonna show you stuff that I use all the time that in the studio, I've always had people be like, oh, what'd you just click, right? Because I'm kind of obsessed with shortcuts and stuff that's just gonna kind of instantly boost your workflow right away. So first, let me grab a one shot. There we go. And now uh, I'm gonna go into the MIDI from our brand new beta pack of Slayer. So the normal way of grabbing MIDI is just to kind of drag it over here, put it on and listen. So that's cool. You know, you're trying to get you're trying to get inspired. You're like dragging you know MIDI into here, but that way is really slow. A way to do it way faster. Actually, on Windows FL, Mac users, I'm sorry, you gotta go figure this shit out yourself. I don't, I don't actually know. So watch what happens when I click the middle mouse button. Bang, 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 bang. Instantly goes in. And so when I'm like trying out a lot of different MIDIs, I don't need to sit there and drag anything that takes extra actions in the studio, I'm trying to eliminate. It's not just MIDI, it's anything you're trying to sub out for. So anytime you're trying to take a sample from your sample library and bring it into the channel rack, you essentially can use this trick. So let's say I already found a MIDI and I want to test out all these different one shots quickly. Instead of doing the drag, drag, I just click the middle, uh, the middle button. See, I can go really fast, right? So I can test out way more ideas and when you're in a situation where you're trying to let your creativity flow, you don't want little things holding you up, especially the things that aren't even creative, they're just inefficiencies. And the same thing goes for kicks and snares. If I'm testing out different kicks and snares, and let's say I have a pattern drawn out in the channel rack, I'll just quickly sub out the kicks and snares. So I'm like, all right, trying out a bunch of different kicks and I'll have to sit there and do a bunch of different things. All right, so when you're in this playlist arrangement mode, there's three shortcuts that I use all the time and I'm constantly sifting back and forth between. First off, the main one, the base one is brush. Okay? Okay, so brushes where, you know, you can sit here and, uh, you know, you can brush in your patterns. It's very simple. It's kind of my standard little pointer mode that I'm kind of always sitting on when I'm in here. But there's another one that I go to all the time. And the first is actually uh, C, right? So this allows me to come in here and slice and dice things in different ways. It's super useful because let's say I bring in like a crash. Sometimes I don't want this whole thing, so I'll sit here and I'll cut a little piece of it, right, just to get exactly what I need. And that's what that C tool, right? The C tool stands for slice. So the slice tool is gonna allow you to come through, and if you hold shift, you'll see it actually kind of snaps to the grid. And if you hold alt, you'll be able to kind of get exactly where you want. But if you don't, you can also do this kind of crazy motion. Look at this. Yeah, so those are kind of little variations of the slice tool. I'm constantly sifting through, slicing a sample up. And then another one that I use all the time is a slip tool. So the slip tool keeps the size of the sample, but allows you to shift the sample within it. Sometimes what I'll do is like these hi-hats, I'll like slice something like that. And maybe if I don't like it, I'll change it. I'll use a slip tool to get in here and change the rhythm a little bit, right? Like I want a little bit of unquantized goodies, right? I'll kind of use this on the fly. Sometimes I do stuff in different ways, but the slip tool on the fly allows me to kind of hone in and hop in here and actually modify drums very quickly. These hi-hats are very simple. So if I had hi-hats more like this, yeah, I have these little moments here, right? Where I can take it and actually shift whether I want to keep that or not. So like there's a little triplet here. I could do that. I can just move over here if I don't want it. I'm constantly slicing, slicing and slipping. S and S, slice and slip. And the slip tool is S by the way when you're here. I use it all the time, it's my secret weapon and honestly not a lot of people use it. It's how I even think about it fellas, slipping stuff around. But yeah, those three shortcuts once again are your brush, that's kind of your main one you always go back to. C, which is gonna be your slice tool, allows you to cut up things and after you cut them up, I like to slip them around which is S. So one big pain, is trying to change the BPM of a song is really annoying because FL asks you that question like, do you want to stretch all samples? And it's like, it feels like this big daunting task or shit just gets completely off. As you can see, when you try to change the BPM, in FL Studio, everything kind of changes if you don't have the um, stretch mode on each individual samples and it's pretty fucking annoying go to each individual sample. So this one isn't a shortcut, but a lot of people don't realize this. If you go to tools up here, you go to macros, you go to switch audio, all audio clips to real time stretching, and you just do it once, now everything, no matter how you change the BPM, they're all going to stretch kind of perfectly. 
And I'm telling you, this is such a big pain. You drag in all your loop stems and you have to grab the, each different one or every single audio sample you have in there. Just go tools, macros, change the real time stretching. 99% of the time, I like to stay on this by default because I'm not really using the other stretch mode, but this makes it so much easier to check different BPMs without your whole project kind of getting out of whack. Okay, so first off, I have this insane sample from Slayer. It sounds like literally the main character's final battle in an anime or something. Just listen to this. Insane, right? But one little thing, I'm constantly playing with processing and uh, I see a lot of people do this thing where they will take things to the mixture track right here, which is pretty fucking quick if I'm being honest with you, like right here, one, two, or three. So really quickly, if you wanna get to, to the mixer, this could be useful. But for me, I sometimes get confused. Let's say I put something on one, two, and three. Well, when I'm coming back to the mixer, there's no indication that there's anything there. So what I like to do is, I'll like this click, like let's say something like this brass sample, I'll come to the mixer, I'll do control L, and this links into the mixer in that same fashion, but it color codes it the same as that sample and it labels it. And to be honest with you, I just use this all the time. It's way easier. Funny, I actually get mad at Devin when we cook up because he's always using this little thing and I can't, I don't know what's on the random inserts and you get kind of confused because you don't know what's actually going on. But if you use control L, not only will it link it up, but it will also kind of label it and color code it. And I just find this way better. So this next one is copy and paste inside the pattern maker. So here I had a track house cooking up and I actually put a lot of different elements into one pattern because I'm not necessarily split things up when I'm cooking up, but it's not necessarily good to have it all in one, right? Let's say I want to meet the baselines, whatever. Uh, one way people do it is they go up here and they right click pattern and they do split by channel. Okay, what that'll do is that'll split it up completely. You can go over here and kind of grab each individual element and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I use that a lot, but a lot of times I don't need all that kind of going on. I'm just trying to move things around and test things. So another way you can do it is just control X Shift four, enter, control V. And essentially what I did was I cut the pattern out, I created a new pattern, I pasted it back in. So, you know, not that you can't use split by channel, but this is like an alternative that I use all the time. And honestly, sometimes I do both. If I have a ton of things, I'll just split by channel. But if I'm moving very quick, sometimes I'll just cut it out, right? Simple uh, control X, control V, and that's very useful in the pattern maker. Okay, when you're using something like hi-hat loops, percussion loops, like you'll drag them in. And as you can see, there's this missing space. So you essentially have to drag the hi-hat loop over. What a lot of people do, and what could be very useful for you is use this time knob. So you can kind of click, move it up and drag it in immediately where it goes. There's some sort of snapping they did on that. It's really good. You almost always hit it. You think you won't hit that thing perfectly, but it snaps usually right to the grid. And that's very useful. But the one I wanna show you is a random sample like this. And when I wanna to get to this one right here, I wanna to get to this little halfway point, you just right click, four bars. And this immediately snaps it on there. In a lot of cases, I'm snapping stuff straight to this four bar grid and I get a lot of cool stuff out of it. I really like using this. I find myself using this almost more than anything, right? So I'll bring something here. As you can see, it's not quite there yet. I'll just snap it to the four bar grid. And if you have this uh, stretching audio and resizing thing, check this little thing right here then I can quickly snap over to this one. You know, it's pretty easy to snap it over. So a lot of times I'll use kind of those two things in mixture to quickly do things, but I would highly recommend even like vocal samples, right? If I grab, I immediately go to four and then I can just move it over. It's a quick way for you to work. In some cases, the time knob makes sense. In other cases, if you want to really min max and optimize that workflow, you can right click that time knob and hit four bars or other options. So for example, you can right click it, you know, you could do two beats and it's tiny, you know what I'm saying, for other samples. Four bars is the biggest, um, and they also have things like uh, auto detect, which I haven't spent a lot of time with. I heard it's good, but I usually just use that four bars one. So the last thing I wanna show you is hitting the S key on the piano roll. So first, let me play this melody for you real quick. I've separated out just the top line melody for this. And I'm gonna hit the S key. And as you can see right here, I have a note. So instead of coming down that C, it's gonna glide down to the C. But what you have to do is you have to extend this top note. So this is kind of dictating like a glide down, listen. And if you make this smaller, it'll be a faster glide. You can actually add a lot of little spice to your melodies. And honestly, sometimes you can just add them in for character reasons. 
What I do a lot of times is I'll just find one or two little glides and I actually learned this from Tumphy, shout out to him. He was showing me this, but you can get a lot of the cool um, characteristics in your melodies just by gliding them around a little bit. All right guys, those are honestly eight simple ass shortcuts that I came up with that I use all the time. Sometimes you, you don't need a textbook per se to learn every shortcut, but honestly I use this stuff all the time. And if I can save half an action here, a little bit of brain space there, a lot of times it just helps me in the studio, helps me pump ideas and it helps me not get caught up on the stupid shit that doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's all about taking what's here and what you're hearing here and just translating it to a song as fast as possible. Anything that's blocking you from a technical perspective is usually not good. And outside of that, guys, we have one of the hardest hitting sample packs of all time coming called Slayer. It's a secret project that we've been working on. We're really excited because we've decided to take everything mainstream and just completely ignore it. Go to a bunch of different crazy corners of the internet and find a bunch of underground music that just hits hard as fuck. Not to mention there's a secret bass plugin called Shockwave that's going to come with it. More on this very soon. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Make sure you like and subscribe. Peace out.